Shri Krishna resides in our Vishuddhi Chakra. In the center he resides as Shri Krishna. On the left hand side, his power, Vishnu Maya, his sister, resides. There he resides as Gopala, as the one who lived in Gokul, played as a child. On the right hand side, he resides as the king who ruled in Dwarika, the king Sri Krishna. These are the three sides of our Vishuddhi Chakra. The people who use their right side to dominate others use their voice to put down people, to show their authority, shout at people, are the people who get affected by the right side. The right side is caught up. On the physical side, you get a very big problem because the right heart cannot work out its flow. So you get what you call asthma and all these diseases. But especially when the right heart is affected by the father's problem. On the left side is the Vishnu Maya, is the sisterly relationship. When the sister who is your pure relation, is not treated as a sister. When the attitude of a person towards women is of indulgence and of lust, then he develops the left Vishuddhi. When he develops the left Vishuddhi very strongly, and if he has a bad agya, or if he has eyes which are roving eyes, then this left Vishuddhi causes a lot of trouble. Left Vishuddhi can be also caused by, as you know, by feeling guilty about things or nothing at all. All these problems arise from Vishuddhi. But Vishuddhi chakra has a speciality. When the human beings raise their head upward from Mother Earth towards the sky, Sky is, ether is Sri Krishna's nature. When he traces his head towards the ether, towards the sky, then this Vishuddhi chakra developed into a different dimension and people started developing the <coughs> ego and superego. Superego was already developed, but ego developed in such a way that it started suppressing the superego. That's how you have got conditionings on one side of the Vishuddhi and ego on the other side. When I told you the other day that you give up your free will, in the sense that when you raised your head, you did it through your free will with your power of growing that you had as animals. After that now you have reached to the human level and to rise above the human level now, you have to do is to seek your complete freedom. And for that, Vishuddhi Chakra is going to help you along. On this Vishuddhi Chakra, we have to really pay full attention. It is such a complicated chakra. It has all the vowels of a Devanagari script emitting out of the sound of the Shakti that is passing through it, of the Kundalini that is passing through it. So all the vowels are heard on these chakras. These vowels are, as you know, sixteen in number. Without the vowel in the Devanagari, you cannot write anything. Vowels are the sustainers are the power that supports every consonant. So it's very important that our vowels have to be fully nourished and respected. 
the movement of the neck as you have seen in all international life if you see everybody has practically the same even those who cannot hear those who do not understand your language you can not like this you can say no like this everyone understand this is yes or no in some particular area of course they have little different type of nodding but too much of nodding of head is not a very good sign i have seen people in the west if you tell them something to show that they have appreciated it they'll go on <laughs> for quite some time <laughs> that's not necessary just have to say all right or i've understood it that's all you have to use your voice instead of nodding like this all the time is very bad very very bad for the vishuddhi chakra or some of them are the other way around that whatever it is they'll put up their head like <laughs> and they won't talk properly they will not say a word they'll just keep quiet you may go on pinching them doing anything they won't budge this kind of personality is also very much detrimental to the growth of their evolution apart from that their vishuddhi becomes a very big problem because of vishuddhi there are so many problems like angina you develop because of vishuddhi you develop spondylitis because of vishuddhi sometimes people lose their voices completely sometimes they have all the time coughing and there are so many physical problems out of vishuddhi because as i said it's a very very complicated center it looks after after your ear nose throat all the 16 subplexuses are there which are looked after by the center but above all is the center of discrimination the center of discrimination only comes when you are free people till you are biased till you have your own concepts you cannot be discreet and that's the one point where one must understand that to achieve your complete freedom you have to get your vishuddhi chakra cleared up first and foremost thing is that we must speak in a sweet manner speak to someone in a sweet manner not artificially but sweetly speak in a manner that another person likes it satyam vadet priyam vadet speak the truth don't tell the lies if you go on telling lies after some time even if you tell the truth it will become a lie but if you are telling the truth that even if you tell a lie it becomes a truth <laughs> now <clears throat> some people think that they can be cunning by their talks they can cheat but actually they are cheating themselves all such people who cheat others by sweet talks by artificial talks or by some maneuver go to such a horrible state and in this kali yuga especially they are cursed and they get exposed and people know about them that these are the greatest liars ever known now the times are coming and all such people will be exposed very much more than they have been ever exposed so be careful not to think that you can cheat in sahaja yoga especially you cannot cheat those who try to cheat sometimes think that we can be full mother we can somehow or other carry on if you sit in front of mother she won't know what we are up to it's not so I may not say. I may use my discretion not to say. I may allow you to have a long way, but be careful. Do not come into my illusions. I am very elusive, and when I play my illusions, you will suddenly find yourself in a very difficult situation, and then you will say, "Mother, why am I in this situation?" So this is one of the qualities of Sri Krishna, that he is the one. who becomes elusive in his elusiveness not cunning but elusive in his elusiveness he exposes people to themselves 
There are so many stories of Sri Krishna in which he has illusively acted to give greater joy to some people, to give nice lessons to some people, and sometimes to punish. For us it is important that we are Sahajogis. In this lifetime we have a chance, our Kundalini has risen, that we can face ourselves, that we can correct our chakras, that we know about ourselves, that we know where is the problem is. I have known of people who were caught up with left Vishuddhis and have become devilish by nature, devilish. They have gone out of Sahaja Yoga, they have criticized Sahaja Yoga, they have tried to trouble me a lot. So don't think that if Vishuddhi is spoiled, there is nothing so special about it. It can be a very dangerous center. Of course, heart, agya and Vishuddhi, these three centers, one has to guard against. Because three of them can allow you or can force you to become one with identification of evil as your own. You might just feel that it's nice to be evil. You might just feel that it is a great fun to be evil and you might become evil. So at the Vishuddhi Chakra one has to be extremely careful. Vishuddhi Chakra looks after so many things, especially your skin, your eyes. Skin is now, I have seen people who have bad Vishuddhi, can have all kinds of funny troubles with their skins. Of course it has to do with your liver, but skin is the way it shines, the way it glows, depends on how you smile, how you look at the world. Many people have a habit of smiling for nothing at all, especially women I have seen, ladies I have seen, they just smile stupidly. That's not wrong. One should not be stupid. Stupidity is against Sri Krishna's principle. Like you have seen the stupid people, how they are. Their tongue is always halfway out. If you have noticed a stupid man, his face is that, his tongue is always out, mouth half open, and he looks like a dumbfounded fool. Now, in this only the Vishuddhi plays the part. Another one is the one where you get the Vishuddhi's strains. So such a person has very pursed lips, angry lips, and he doesn't talk. The another one might even get the expression of an idiot, but could be just making a face like that. Because if he's cunning, he may take a I would say a kind of a rupa or what mask. you say? Huh? A mask. Mask, you can say a mask on his face that he is an idiot and may try to deceive you. So nothing is uh, definite about Vishuddhi. Whatever may be the expression of a person, a person may look very innocent because that's the thing you can do with your Vishuddhi. You are free because you have raised your head. At this point you have achieved this kind of a special aptitude that <coughs> you can deceive yourself and you can deceive others. Some people look extremely innocent on the face. They may look to be very simple people, but may turn out to be hot. Some people may look to be idiotic, but may be very intelligent. So it is how you play with your Vishuddhi which is, <coughs> which is responsible. <coughs> but the main thing, what I'm trying to tell you, that you can maneuver your issues, the way you want to put your expression, the way you want to make your face, the way you want to suggest something, all you can maneuver and you can keep your heart away from it. In the heart you may have poison for a person, but 
outwardly you may say to that person in a very sweet manner something that the person might feel impressed. But in this, all this behaviour, pattern of behaviour, you are deceiving yourself, not deceiving the another person, because your self is spirit which knows you very well. And this will go on and on for all your lives that have to come. So there is no need in any way to be artificial in your expression. There is no need to hide anything in your expression. Of course, I mean, if you don't like someone, you need not just say, I don't like you. But in that case, you have to be not also so much appreciative of the person that he is deluded into your appreciation. Now, eyes are very important and eyes, in a way, are very much looked after by Vishuddhi because the muscles of the eyes are looked after <coughs> by Vishuddhi. Now, the kind of muscles we have which pull our eyes, which close our eyelids and all that is very much suggestive. You must notice that there are some people who come to me their eyes go on like this, when they close their eyes, they cannot keep it shut. There are some people, when they open their eyes to me, they just keep the eyes open, they just cannot close it. Both are in trouble. The ones which are, the ones which are just keeping the eyes open all the time are the people having supraconscious moods. And those who are flickering their eyes are having the subconscious mood. Some people have also the habit of uh, <coughs> keeping the eyes in an angle all the time. They never see you straight, but uh, in an angle they see. <laughs> uh, they think it's sometimes it's very fashionable. Sometimes uh, ladies think it's a very good way of looking at people, and some of them have such eyes that they'll go on, you know, looking and pouring their greedy eyes onto others or their lusty eyes onto others. This is the first thing you can do to your eyes because such people are easily can become blind. Such people might have trouble of the eyes, especially reddening of the eyes can come to such people very much, very quickly. So one has to be careful to keep the eyes very pure, the eyes of an Yogeshwara who was Sri Krishna. He was a witness. He, he was on this earth. He, play, he played with Radha. He married five women. They were the five elements. Sixteen thousand women he married. They were his sixteen thousand powers. But he was Yogeshwara. He was Yogeshwara. He had no lust in his eyes, in his mind about them at all. He was beyond them. He was Yogeshwara. That was the testing point of his, that he had no lust in his eyes about these women that he had. Such an Yogeshwara is there. Of course, I don't expect you to be Shri Krishna, but you have your wife. Those who do not have wife must look forward to a wife, that we'll get wives and we'll, be, uh, we'll have a wife and think of a wife who will be your own, so that your eyes will not fall onto every woman who comes across uh, with that kind of a thing. I have seen people, even the photographs or anything they see is surprising. I mean, there's nothing in a photograph, what is in a photograph? But even a photograph can attract their attention. I mean, I don't know what can attract their attention like this, but they are so vulnerable and they have no control over their eyes, no control. They become absolutely lost and they have no control. That shows that they have no powers in them and they are slaves of their responses. So the eyes are very, very important, as Christ has said, thou shalt not have adulterous eyes. There should be no adultery. Some people have a habit of showing anger with the eyes. You see, they have to show anger with the eyes, they'll just go on looking like this and show the anger. I need, dare not do that to you, but still. <laughs> And the angry eyes, you see, are another dangerous thing to do with your eyes because then they can become mesmeric. If you start putting your eyes onto something and concentrating on it, 
your eyes might become mesmeric means boots will start coming out of your eyes. First of all, you will catch boots in your eyes, they will settle down there and then they will be falling on other people as boots. It's a very, very dangerous thing to go on looking at something continuously with concentration. There's another kind of a stupid thing or a bhutish thing maybe that people ask you to meditate here. It's absolutely wrong. In Gita it is written, still it's wrong. Nobody should put attention here. If they have to put attention, put attention at the door. What's the use of looking at a window? You can't get out of it, can you? If you have to look at anything, be on the lookout for the door. And the door is here. The door of Sastrara is to be opened out. So you should not try to concentrate on this part. Many people who have concentrated on this part have become mad. When they become mad, people say he's a yogi but has got unmanitasha, that he moves like a madcap. How can a yogi be a madcap? That means he's united with God. Is he mad? <laughs> All such mad people are really mad. They have nothing to do with God, definitely. But there are people who believe in such things. Oh, he is in love with God, so he just jumps on the stage and goes into ecstasy, he dances like a madcap. How can God be mad? First position is this, that the sanest personality is God. Has to be. From where do the sanity come? So this is one thing one has to understand that any such practices can lead you to lunacy and one should not be. Thirdly, the indiscretion that one has comes from people who are good-hearted, nice people, but they get carried away by uh, the smiles of others or by the artificial uh, goodness they show on their faces. I have known some people, they always have a face like this, as if they are all the time smiling. I can't do that way. <laughs> all the time if you look at somebody like this, you see, it means as if you are mocking at a person. And there are people I've seen who just like this every time, get them like this. <laughs> so, one should not be always in one pose. Sometimes these muscles can get very weak and start paining if you take one. There are some others who always try to show they are very miserable. <laughs> I don't know what do they want to attract. Attract the attention of others, attract uh, the boots in themselves, or I don't know what are they up to. Why can't they keep a normal face? Even while sitting in dhyan or meditation, I have seen them trying to show me or me, whatever it is, because my eyes are mostly cold, closed, but doesn't matter. When I open my eyes, I find some people like this, like that. <laughs> Why? What is the need? You have to have a balanced face. That's what Sri Krishna has described, the Sita Pragya. One who is balanced, who doesn't laugh like an idiot, who laughs, but not like an idiot, nor is a serious, like another kind of an idiot. So both the things are not at all expression of your inner being. Such a person is, as I told you today, is not frivolous, but not serious either, but full of joy within himself. He doesn't want you to be unhappy, never would like that you should be unhappy people. But human beings, if they want to be unhappy, what can anybody help because they have got the free will to be unhappy? They have got a free will to cut their nose, they have a free will to cut their ears, they have free will to commit suicide. They have this free will, so-called. Now the greatest free will comes from Vishuddhi as I told you. And that's why we call him Yogeshwara. He is the Ishwara of Yoga. The establishment of yoga is possible when you surrender yourself to Shri Krishna. Completely surrender yourself to Shri Krishna, your yoga will be established. Means what? Means all your balances will be established. 
you go into complete balance and that balance is complete because vishnu who is the incarnation for sustaining the dharma who is responsible for giving you the balance becomes complete in the form of shri krishna that's why he said that you leave all the dharmas sarva dharma naam parityajya maam ekam sarana braje that's why surrender all of them to you so all the dharmas if you put it at the lotus feet of shri krishna means if you follow his ideas then all your dharmas are balanced but after realization you go beyond that whenever you go wrong in dharma dharma chut as they call it when you go wrong in dharma that's the time you have to surrender yourself to shri krishna so that he establishes your dharma there are so many dharmas there is the pati dharma husband's dharma patni dharma wife's dharma father's dharma mother's dharma son's dharma the rashtra dharma means the nation's dharma then you have all kinds of dharmas also uh, we can say uh, where one has to bow to the uh, higher things of life but then he says sarva dharma naam parityaj forget all the dharmas ma me kam sharanam raj just surrender your dharmas all of them to me that is at vishuddhi <coughs> at vishuddhi chakra you surrender all your other dharmas it means that it all gets sublimated it all gets complete the wholesomeness is achieved because he is collective be he is the virat because he is the integrated form of all the dharmas and he is the virata in our brain he represents our brain and when this virat in us is awakened fully then all the dharmas become natural with us we don't have to do any dharmas we don't have to be conscious of any dharmas but automatically we become dharma ourselves for example there are people now say christ we can take example of christ he was dharma personified he would not steal money from anybody will he will he run away with somebody's wife will he will he do anything wrong no he cannot why because he was dharma so now you have become dharma atit means you have entered into the kingdom of god into the virata's conditions and there your condition is such that your state is such your state is such that you are dharma if you try to do a dharma you will suffer if you try to do wrong you will suffer here i don't have to tell you to be righteous i don't have to tell you. there's no need I don't have to tell you that you tell the truth. I don't have to tell you don't steal. I don't have to do all these things. Only thing I can tell you that get rid of your ego and super ego. That's all. In a very general terminology. But you will follow Christ automatically. You will follow Krishna automatically. Sahaj. Because now you have gone beyond dharma. you have crossed the limits of dharma where you had to follow a dharma now you have become the dharma where you will stand wherever you will be dharma will stand with you people will look at you and say here is a dharma standing he is the dharma to be worshiped not because of anything but because your state is that of dharma you have gone beyond supposing this is a loud speaker i am using today to talk to you. but supposing this loud speaker becomes part and parcel of me i don't have to use this i go beyond it in the same way you are using the dharma first of all to establish yourself but when you go beyond dharma 
into the state of Virata. Then you don't need any dharma. You become the dharma of Virata. Now what is the dharma of Virata? What is the dharma of Sri Krishna? Is collectivity. Krishna is the brain. Shiva is the heart and Brahmadeva is the liver. Now what's the faculty of this brain is? That the tree of life of evolution grows downward as he says. And this tree is growing downwards of awareness from the brain. But if you have to go to the roots, you have to ascend. And that ascent you have achieved, now you have gone to the roots of your brain, where all your roots are enlightened, all your nerves are enlightened, your brain is enlightened. You are an enlightened person. When you are in darkness, you may catch hold of a snake as rope, but when you are in light, you will drop it. In the same way, when you become enlightened, your dharma is enlightened. You don't have to take to any guru or to any book or to anyone. You know yourself in your own life that this is wrong. Now the collectivity part of it is very important. Anybody who cannot be collective is not yet a Sahaja Not yet a Sahaja at all. Collective in the sense that anybody who cannot live with other Sahaja who tries to find faults with someone all the time, who wants to run away with his wife and stay somewhere else, or with her husband, who wants to get out, is not a person who is collected. There's no need to say that I cannot live under the circumstances in which Sahaja Yogi is currently. If you are a Sahaja Yogi, if you are a Yogi, you can live. Look at me, I am such an old woman, I can live anywhere. You take me to a village, you take me to any place, I am not bothered about any physical comforts at all, because I am comfortable within myself. My comforts are within myself. In the same way, a person who is not collective, like many people just come to pujas, that's all. It's like going to the church only once in Christmas and then say, Christ doesn't look after us. Of course not going to church, you don't meet Christ, but I mean to say that just to have a casual way of Sahaja Yoga, you cannot eat. You have to be collective, and collective means that at every collective program you should be there. You should always meet collectively, meditate collectively, live collectively, and try to find ways and methods of being collective. There are so many evil forces which are all the time trying to attack collectivity. First they will attack the leaders, that's the first thing. Any leader tells somebody, you shouldn't do like this. Immediately that person will start spreading stories against that leader is very bad, he's like this, he's very harsh, he didn't garland me, he didn't give me this, that. How can you garland a booth, can you? Then if that, that uh, doesn't work out, then they have their sly methods of going around and talking something here and there in the years to create some sort of a politics. All such people will be thrown out of Sahaja Yoga, as there is a centrifugal and a centripetal force, both acting equal and opposite. Anybody who goes against collectivity, who sticks to their boots, sticks to their negativity, will have to get out of Sahaja Yoga. And that is to be remembered, that to be collective is to be joyous, is to be progressive, to be going further. It was all right when people were meditating in the Himalayas. It was all right at that time, they were all alone, meditating all alone to achieve something for the collective. But they also did not get their realization. When you have got your realization, remember this. Now you have entered into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of Virat, where you are a part and parcel of a collective being. You are not alone. You cannot be single out. You cannot separate yourself. Now you are awakened in the body of Virata and you cannot get out of it. 
If you try to get out of it, you cannot be nourished. Supposing I take out part of my body, will it be nourished by this body? It won't be. In the same way, you have now become part and parcel of that collectivity. And that collectivity, that Virat, is going to look after you, going to nourish you, going to do the, everything that is necessary for your spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, even financial development. But if you cut it short, if you try to block the collectivity, if you try to make problems for collectivity, or even if you try just to get out of the collectivity, then that is not our interest, that is not our work. This is to be understood fully in every way possible. And this one is understood in a proper way. You should know that collectivity is not only your advancement, it's not only your development, it's not only your achievements, is the achievement of the whole <coughs> humanity. The purpose of your creation is fulfilled by that. Those people who live in the ashram are better off always than the people who live alone, always. They will always have better results than the people who live alone. Maybe they live alone because they want to have a little private life or a privacy. But their privacy is not going to help them. That's not going to help them at all. The more you live together, the more you recite together, the more you enjoy together, there will be greater chances of your advancement. The more you will try to make yourself private, the more you will try to get out of it. Whatever explanation you may give, God understands you very well. So all such things where you cut off yourself from the mainstream, you try to get out of the mainstream, then there is a big problem for you. Of course, for certain conveniences you may, for your certain understanding you may, but you should enjoy more the company of Sahajogis than your own private company in the dingy room of yours. That is one thing you can judge yourself. Do you enjoy the company of Sahajogis or you enjoy the company of three, four of your family people together in a circus? Judgment is your own. <laughs> Not difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is difficult in Sahaja. It is the simplest thing to be a Sajogi, and even more simple to be collective. To be uncollective, you have to do something. Like I said that, it is very easy not to drink. I mean, I mean drink some wines and things. Because if you don't want to drink, you are sitting at home, it's all right, don't have to do anything. But suppose you have to drink, then you have to go to a pub, or you have to go somebody, open the bottle, get a particular type of a glass, pour it down, this, that. In India, for example, where there is prohibition, you are sitting with a fright. <laughs> but for a person who just drinks water, he doesn't have to do it. So to do wrong, one has to do something. But to be good, you don't have to do much. It's absolutely labour-saving, energy-saving <laughs> <laughs> You see, to do bad, supposing, you see, I <coughs> uh, want to harm somebody, I'll have to go out of the way to find out ways, methods. If I have to tell lies, I have to think of ten lies to cover that one lie. But if I tell the truth, finished, I have told, I've told the truth, finished, with few words, it's done. So to be collective is much more easier. Of course, not for crooked people, because crooked people, wherever they move, their angularities trouble others. You see, like uh, uh, poking uh, thoughts. But those who are flowers, they fit in anyway. People like them. They like their fragrance. They look at them, they enjoy them. Beautiful things. Now see, today they are looking like lotuses. How is it? 
without doing anything they have become lotuses how how they have become like lotuses whether they are lotuses or they are disease god alone knows but they have become lotuses such how if was there one with god when we stand on our own way when we try to do something privately then god says all right go private <laughs> but when we are public he looks after us and then in sahaja yoga as you know that collective growth is the only way we understand sahaja somebody knows something somebody knows something else somebody knows something else when we are collective then we really understand every aspect of such supposing there is somebody a scientist somebody is a musician somebody is another thing we cannot know everything so you know something from this one something from that one something from that so all the rivers as it flow into that collectivity and you enjoy the ocean of all these rivers you don't have to go to all the rivers in india like you go from ganga yamuna saraswati kaveri you thousands of miles go to the sea all of them are there <laughs> like that you have to enjoy the sea where everything is all kinds of beautiful things are there and you enjoy that i hope this puja which is a very remarkable puja firstly so many things are such firstly they told me the telephone number of this place is 32 1632 he 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 has got he is accompanied by 64 yoginis shri krishna so 32 on this side and 32 on that side of the sitting room <laughs> this place is called as black uh, lake krishna is black this place they got suddenly and this is the only place in this uh, so called military regime of switzerland <laughs> where people can sleep on the ground you are not supposed to sleep on the ground if there's no cot you hang in the air but you cannot touch the <laughs> <laughs> that kind of stupid military business is here there to find such a sensible practical such a cheap place for you is god said we are here surrounded by beautiful things with the cows so many cows at the time when it is krishna's birthday so many cows so fond of cows and the cows when they their bells move in the morning i heard in the evening so beautiful and when they were moving home in the evening how the as they call goraj is the dust of their feet was filling the sky is just go cool here i felt today also there's one thing more one has to say that is the 16th shri krishna puja so in so many ways this is a very great puja which you are attending for which people have to take thousands and thousands of janmas do so many punyas which you have got so sahaj because there must be something about you people also may god bless you